What up, guys? Welcome to Music Blueprint. I believe this is episode seven. So crazy. We release these every Monday. So again, if you haven't seen the first six episodes, please go check them out. We've talked about everything from how to make money to if you're a teacher, how to find clients. I mean, the the spectrum is very vast. Um, but today we're talking about something pretty specific, and that's songwriting. So I know a lot of us kind of dabble in songwriting or maybe we're full-time songwriters. Me personally, I'm a full-time touring and songwriter. So I kind of do both. Most recently with everything that's been going on with COVID, I've been doing more songwriting. So, uh, and I just wanted to break down kind of the process of songwriting. This will be more of like an entry level talking about how, where do you start? if you're just getting into this, but also probably towards the end of this video, giving more insight about certain lyric choices and, and how to, how to kind of stay away from just sounding cheesy. In my opinion, there's just some words in the dictionary. Although there's a ton of words in the dictionary, you don't need to use all of them. <laughs> there are some words that just don't fit. And so we're just going to get into that. So for me, when I, when I start songwriting, I typically, now everything in songwriting is usually typically or usually it's never always because one, there are so many different ways to do things. There's a lot of different ways to skin a cat as the saying goes, and the same goes for songwriting. For me personally, I like starting with a melody. The reason why I like starting with a melody is because certain words have certain accents, you know, um, what's a great example? Melody. Melody. The accent is on the beginning part of the phrase or of the word. And so you want to make sure that your strong parts of the melody, your strong accents of the melody match the strong accents of the word. So I like laying out the melody first because then when I'm going to write lyrics, I'm not putting the strongest part of the melody that's like, ah, uh, you know, like a really long note. And I'm not putting the word the on the longest note because the means nothing to nobody. You want to put fire on a long note or something that has more significance in your song. So I really like laying out that first. It just gives me a good structure of what's going on. Now, that's not the way that everybody does it. A prime example of somebody who doesn't do that is Elton John. Elton John and his writing partner, his writing partner writes the lyrics and then Elton comes over and does the musical part of it and the melody part of it. So there are successes with not doing it that way, but typically in most songwriting sessions, people start with a melody because it's so much easier to match the accents up um, and just have those synchronized in a way. And you know, sometimes you purposefully don't match those accents up, but you have to understand first, understand the game of how it's played. And then once you understand the rules, then you can break them and you're breaking them intentionally rather than just, oh, well, I just like that. Okay. Well, why do you like that? Like give, give me some, you know, clarification as to why. So, and, and in terms of melody too, a lot of that is inspired by what you're listening to, what you grew up listening to. I tend to melodically stay in the R&B alternative realm. I really like big notes, but I also like the angstiness of certain notes. And I like playing with a lot of sevens and nines. And if you don't know what that is, it's just talking about scales um, and, and scales within a song. Uh, so I like messing around with a lot of those and that stems from what I listen to and what I listen to currently. A lot of times I'll, I'll just start listening to like, I don't know, ice cube for a week. And then all of a sudden my, my rhythms are a lot different than normal. So, um, and with melody, although the notes are very important, the rhythm is extremely important. A lot of times what we tend to do is we tend to stick to like, you know, dot, 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 dot. And you're like, hold on. I can't hear that for the whole song. So rhythm really spices things up. I remember one of my first sessions 
in LA out of, out of graduating from college, I was riding with my boy Cleef and I, we had just met. It was our, I, I think second session we had together and I was riding. It was me and my buddy Christian and him and we were riding and we were trying to figure out, we had two really good melodies, great melodies. And, uh, they were very similar, but we were trying to figure out which fit with the track the best. And one of the things that Cleve said, which he's he's been in the game for a really long time, he said, I like this melody because the way it fits in the pocket of the rhythm of the track fits better. So you got to be aware of like what rhythms you're doing. Because a lot of times, you know, hitting a triplet rhythm may not work. And that's really easy to do, especially when you're doing like hip hop, you naturally want to go to the Migos, like that's, that's easy to go to, (laughs) but you got to learn how to mix it up and, and kind of merge a lot of influences together so that it just doesn't get monotonous. Um, one of the things that I learned as well in writing melody and in writing lyrics was if you start the verse out very rhythmic um, and on a stagnant note, you want to make that gives you the opportunity. If the if the melody sorry if the melody and the and the rhythm is more stagnant, then that gives you the opportunity to be more lyrical. And then the opposite is reversed. If the melody and the rhythm is more moving, then you want to be more simple with the lyrics, and that's. That came from somebody that literally has 60 number one hits. So when they said that to me, one, that just made so much sense because when I started looking at all these top songs on the radio, time and time again, when the melody was super moving and had all these like crazy notes in it and rhythms and whatever, the lyrics were so simple. And then the opposite was always true. So again, I don't know everything. I'm just sharing what my experience is, but might be a good food for thought, especially when you're starting out. Um, I think when you're starting out, you really just want to kind of feel it and have, oh, this is what sounds good to me and be open to other people with either more experience or, or maybe just other people of showing you, oh, well, what about this? And don't, in the beginning, don't be so closed minded it's, it's real easy in the beginning when you're just starting out to think that, no, this is what it's supposed to be and I know best. And as you get further along in the songwriting game, you realize you know nothing. <laughs> and you realize every time you go into a session, somebody is in there that can just whoop you on melodies and whoop you on rhythms and lyrics and everything. And so if you can start earlier being open to ideas and random things. I mean, I have said some outlandish things in a session and it was just, I had like a picture in my mind and I was trying to explain what I meant and what the feeling tied to that picture was. And then we ended up using it. And it was weird when I first said it and everybody looked at me like, what the heck are you saying? But then when we actually refined it, it ended up to be one of the coolest songs or the coolest lyrics in the song. So again, you gotta be really open. People will say weird things, try to figure out what they're actually meaning, find like find the source of their feeling. Um, And melody is a really great way to convey feeling as well. If you wanna say something really, really meaningful, melody is a great way to just connect that. Because a lot of times people remember melody over lyrics. Melody is, even though everything is split in copyrights and in in thirds or halves or whatever, um, which I think for copyrights, it's just split melody and lyrics, but some people will argue it should be melody lyrics production. But again, that's that's an argument for another time. (laughs) But melody is more memorable a lot of times than lyrics, especially initially. Initially, if you want to get people on the hook, you got to have a crazy melody. There are so many songs out there that lyrically mean nothing, but they're like a number one song or top, you know, Billboard Top 100, and it's because they're just catchy. So there's a reason why we sing Happy Birthday. You know what I mean? Like Happy Birthday is 
<laughs> really, really catchy. Or Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Really, really catchy. But like, what does it mean? I mean, happy birthday. We obviously know what it means. But Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. How I want. Like, what is, how is that a thing, you know? So again, melody is super, super important. Um, focus on that. Learn from that. Learn from other people. When you hear a melody, try to figure out, okay, how can I take that same melody and flip it on its head and and still use the rhythms? I mean, just mess around with stuff. A lot of times I will just get on the mic and I'll just have them loop the entire track and I will try anything in my head that I can think of that sounds weird and I've never done before. And some of the coolest things come out of that. Um, and so anyways, just be really open. Second thing is obviously lyrics. And the most important thing that I have found with lyrics is start with a feeling. Sometimes that feeling comes out naturally when you're singing melodies and words come out. And maybe subconsciously that is what you're feeling and you can use that or sometimes it's not. You have to be the judgment of that. But the key thing about lyrics is you always have to start with a feeling. You have to start with what is going on to you today. And every day is different. <laughs> and sometimes I feel like for some guys that's that's harder to understand. Girls, we tend, you know, we're a little bit more emotional, which can work to our advantage sometimes, especially in this field. But you really have to be in tune with what's going on internally. And when you are in tune with what's going on internally, the lyrics that come out happen so organically. I'll give a great example. Recently, I... There were some people that I knew that needed help with trying to become successful songwriters. They didn't know how to have a full-time income as a songwriter. And so I was in the room when they were talking about this and I said, hey, well, if you, if you ever need help, please just let me know. I would love to help. Here are some sites that you can use to help, you know, you start making money, all these things. And, and they were like, oh, okay, cool. I'll definitely hit you up on that. Um, I also told them flat out, look, it's a grind S songwriting, especially if you aren't wanting to sign with a publishing deal right away, or you're not wanting to just, I don't know, sell your songs away for a cheap price. Uh, it's a grind and you got to be out there every day. You got to go to every show you have to like, you're building your network and it's just nonstop. Well, later I found out that they didn't really like that. I said that. And they called me some things behind my back that were upsetting, very upsetting to me. And so it was a few days later and I had a session and it was still bugging me, even though I'm pretty good at letting things like that go. Cause to me, I offered, I offered my help. I was actually being a good human and I offered my help and, um, if you didn't want my help, no big deal. I mean, I just offered it. It's, it's your life, your decision, whatever. But to talk behind my back and call me horrible things when you don't even really know me, that I had one conversation with you, it just irked me. And so I wrote this song called Benefits. And um, because those people acted very kind to me, like, you know, they were in that scenario being so nice and whatever, but then I find out behind the scenes that they're doing what they're doing. I said, you know, you're acting like you, you wanna be my friend, but you just want the benefits. And you just wanna, you wanna take the knowledge that I have, or you wanna take the, the opportunity that I can give you, but then you wanna talk behind my back. So you just wanna act like a friend in my face so you can get what you want, but then, then you're gone once you get it. And it's like, you just want the benefits. And so that was very true to me then, and it honestly, in the last few months is one of the best songs I've written. It's just because I was real with what was going on in my life and, and it was true to me and it came through. So, and, and sometimes too, it can be a memory, you know, maybe, you know, you're, you're trying to reflect back on something that happened in your childhood or, um, 
maybe just a period of time in your life that was just awesome. One of the great examples of that to me is Teenage Dream by Katy Perry. I listened to that song and one, it feels like California to me. And being a person from California, it feels like, I remember when the song came out and I literally, I would say for six months straight, would blast that song, roll down my windows, put the sunroof back, and blast that song down PCH for like six months straight. And it totally epitomized to me what California was, but also as you grow up, what California is. Um, And it's just, I don't know, it's just a great song and it has very specific things in it. And it just kind of taps into all these nostalgic memories that you knew you had, but didn't know you had until you listened to the song. And it's just awesome. It's one of my favorite songs that's ever been written, honestly. It's like, you make me feel like I'm living a teenage dream. Like what? That's just, that's a great line. Um, But using, using, actually using that song as an example, this is something that is very key in lyric writing is you have to have a balance of things. Kind of like what I said with the give and take of melody and lyrics, when the melody and the rhythm is is more moving and has um, more elements to it, you want to be a little bit simple on the lyrics. And the same goes, you know, for the reverse. Lyrics in itself also has that balance. Um, typically, again, I use typically, you want to be more specific in the verses. You want to talk about, you know, coffee on the counter or... Um, uh, I, I still see the imprint in our bed of you. You know what I mean? You want to name specific things so that you create this picture of, okay, what's the listeners like, what's going on here? Like there's a coffee on the counter. They're not, you know, the person that they are talking about isn't in their bed. And it seems like they usually are in their bed. Um, your t-shirt's still on the floor. I mean, like all these specific things. So you're painting this picture of like, okay, what's happening? Like, have they left? Have they died? Have they, (laughs) what, what is going on here? And then when the chorus hits, it could be something like, I still miss you. Even though you left, I still miss all the things we had. And then the listener goes, oh, they left. And even though the chorus was very general, it was simple things. I miss you. I miss the things we had you know, whatever. Now the listener's like, oh my gosh, all those things are the things that that person left behind. And that person's having to deal with the aftermath of all of the objects around the house that still remind them of that person. So again, it's everything in songwriting is a balance. You don't want to be too like lopsided um, for the most part. I will always, I will always have a contingency with songwriting for the most part, because there are tons of songs that are very wordy. And Adele is a great example. Most of her songs are pretty wordy. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, even like we could have had it all like that rolling in the deep, like that's still simple. It's a one line chorus. I don't know. You guys can listen to songs and try to see and try to decipher also periods of time play a difference in songwriting too. You know, back in the 70s and classic rock era, 70s, 80s, they were a lot wordier, a lot wordier. But then you go back to the 40s and even back to the 20s and it's no lyrics at all. So there's definitely an evolution of songwriting and you kind of have to find the wave or You're like, this is my wheelhouse. I only do classic rock and I'm not changing it. And then you just become insane in that one area. Uh, For me, I'm more of a person that is better with going with different waves of things just because one, I'm in pop music and I love diversity. I, I tend to get bored if I'm just doing one thing nonstop, one genre, one whatever. Um, but if that's not you, then that's not you. And you should take a deep dive into, whatever genre of music you really like. If it's rock, if it's uh, pop, R&B, hip hop, doesn't matter. Whatever it is, take a deep dive into that going from way, way back all the way until today. Because, 
hip hop, if we want to use that as an example, hip hop, hip hop goes way back. I mean, back to like even Ice Cube or even earlier than, I mean, like way earlier than that. There's, there's examples of it in, I, I think in the sixties and seventies of people rapping. And, and then if you want to go into like, um, spoken, spoken word, that was like a big, sp- uh, part of, of hip hop and, and the movement and stuff. A lot of, it's actually funny. I've been watching, um, Def, Def Jam has been releasing, uh, I guess they had uh, like, um, an event where they did spoken word and Kanye used to go up there and take his raps and just do spoken word versions of them. And a lot of times those spoken word versions of them became, um, gold digger or became, um, all falls down, like all these different songs. And so uh, with, with that, it's like, if you start diving into that, you have a com- huge breadth of knowledge that you can dive into to try to figure out, Oh, that rhythm that Snoop did was crazy. Or if you want to go more modern, like Migos has all these triplet rhythms. And then you, you start putting these things together and you start realizing, yo, this is, this is crazy. This is cool. I can now have different um, rhythms, different melodies, different things that I can come up with because I now have more knowledge about what's going on. So again, going back to songwriting, there's no specific way to do it. Me, I take more of a, I want to learn about all the things. I'm more of a jack of all trade kind of person where I like learning about a bunch of different things and don't really stick to one thing because it, to me, gets a little boring. But if you're a person that's like, no, from the beginning, I have loved rock and alternative, or I have loved R&B, and this is what I do, then do that and become great at it, period. Um, But just learn the game first. Don't try to jump into the game and be breaking all the rules, but you don't even know why you're breaking the rules, and you don't, like... You're trying, oh, well, I just think it's cool. And it's like, yeah, but the people that understand the game and have learned the game, they know the reasons why that isn't cool. And so you got to really learn the game. You got to be a student. You got to be a student with the pen and, and learn all these different things so that when somebody's like, nah, I don't really like that. Like, it's kind of weird. And then it could be like, yeah, it's weird. But the reason why it's weird is because alternative rock, they don't ever stick to an ABA rhyme scheme they'll be like a b b and then they'll just throw d out of nowhere (laughs) throw d they'll just throw d out of nowhere and then you're like what that doesn't even fit the rhyme scheme but it but it fits because it's angsty and then you have the reason why you've decided to to make your decision so again i just wanted to dive into just a few little tidbits about songwriting and and how it works. We are super, super close in releasing the Music Blueprint program, uh, which will go into a a lot more depth. We'll give you things about little exercises to do to help your songwriting, um, websites that you can sign up for that uh, will pay you for either songs you've written or pay you to be a top liner, which just means a person that writes to the tracks that are already given. So again, keep your eye out for that. We're really close to having that finished and um, try to up your songwriting game. See you next Monday.